What's up, you bastards? Welcome back to It's Tough, the Magnum True Child podcast. Today on It's Tough, we have Max Don. Yes. And But before we talk to him, I got to tell you guys to go do a few things like I always do. We're at 115 subscribers. We're doing pretty fucking good. I talked to him before this. I think we can get this up to 130 after this video. Do you think that's Easy. reasonable? Easy. Easily. Okay, also... On the last video, you guys fucking did it. You guys commented and liked if you knew him or knew whoever I had in like the guest spot. So if you know Max, comment. If you like the video, like. And that's about it. If you know me, throw a comment down there too. Helps out the algorithm, whatever. Do whatever the fuck you want. I really don't give a shit. That's about it, right? I'm, yeah, I think you covered it all. All right. Um, so Max hit me up. I wanted to do the podcast. Came down for spring break or up. And uh, now we're doing the podcast. Yeah, I mean, I saw the podcast. I saw it. Saw some celebrity guests on there. Some people <laughs> I knew. So I was like, dude. I mean, me and Magnum go back. I mean, why not? Why not do a podcast with them? Yeah, the Bradenton Tennis Celebrity Podcast, dude. Ten, ten and under tennis, <laughs> dude. Oh my god, that was a long time ago. I used to have long blonde hair. Yeah, you, I have a picture from like it was somebody's birthday party or something. Toby's, was, Toby's birthday party. <laughs> we're in the back and. I was just like, wait, that kid looks familiar. It's just, it was. I found that at the time when you were like bald, and I was like, he literally went from that to the, the afro. Yeah. To the. Yeah, I had a beautiful, long, luscious, blonde, like wavy hair. You, you were like classic surfer boy, like yeah, like push I, it, I look like the, Barry Manilow, like I look, flick it to the side. But for some reason, like it turned into a Jufro after that. That's why I keep my hair short. That's the real secret. <laughs> if I grow it out, I look like Jonah Hill. Well, you had it long too. I remember like freshman year. I was, I was fat. Like I was literally going for the Jonah Hill look from super bad. I was like, that's like a good look. I never even thought about that, but yeah, it is. But like, you look like a, like a, like an eighties pop star too with like the, the, the perm. Kinda yeah. Like, well that's how, but like my hair is a perm naturally. Uh -huh. Like that's just how it fucking is. But I mean, it was, it was a look. So you've been going to college at FGCU. Yeah, freshman at FGCU, second semester now. How you liking that? Uh, I mean, I like it. I think first semester was really tough. You know, as you you know you know that it's yeah. The, I think the adjustment was. Some people don't give up just like me. <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, I came in, you know, not really uh knowing what to expect. Uh, you know, it obviously wasn't like my dream school or anything like that. I thought I was gonna. Did you have a dream school? Um, from like a younger age. Yeah. Cause I mean, I always thought, you know, I'd play college tennis, but then kind of stop, yeah, stop yeah, playing. And so it was just really kind of just like picking. I knew I, well, I wanted to go to LSU and okay. I got, I got in, yeah. got scholarship money. I like knew the coach there. Uh, the coach, uh, the coach actually coached my brother at USTA, mm -hmm. Andy Brandy. Oh you. yeah. I know. Her. And, uh, and so I was like, yeah, you know, but, uh, I talked to my parents and they're like, listen, like you can go to LSU for whatever, $30,000 a year, or you can go FSU, UC, FGCU yeah. for 3000 a year. Yeah. So I was like, you know, and they said, they said, obviously if you go to floor, uh, if you go to Florida, like we'll pay for it. Like yeah. nothing because compared to St. Stephen's, it's yeah, nothing. nothing. I can go to four years of that for less, FGC than, for one less year. than one year at St. Stephen's and they're like, you know, if you go to LSU, like, yeah, we'll help you out. But like, you got to take on loans. And, and I was like, there's that. no way that LSU is worth $27,000 yeah, more. more than yeah. FGCU. Like, I, I think no school's worth like those crazy amounts. Yeah. Like even like, okay, obviously like if you go to Harvard, but like you're paying sixty, seventy thousand yeah. dollars $70,000. Like, I don't know if it's worth That's it. It's also but. Harvard, you know? But so... I, I went to FGCU first semester. I uh, I roomed with so I I room with Cade Westbury mm -hmm. and I have two other high school roommates. buddy high school high school buddy good friend from high school and two other guys they're they're older they're like twenty two uh, but they don't go to FGC they go to state college there FSW so was that like an apartment deal it's a, it's an off campus like apartment but it's like two minutes from school gotcha because the the dorms are like atrocious sure. and so I was like. You know, so, you know, I know Cade. So I was like, you know, I'll have, I'll at least have like a, a friend. friend. <laughs> and so, you know, I, you know, go, always go to my classes, all that good stuff, first couple weeks. And then I was just kind of like, I, it just felt like something was like missing. And so, you know, I'd come home 
basically like every other weekend because I was just like, you know, there wasn't really anything to do on the weekends. Like I wasn't 18 yet. So I was 17 when I first met. So I think couldn't that even like go out to I the couldn't go out bars. I was like, you know, I'm not going to get a, a fake that says I'm 18. Yeah. Like, that's pointless. See, like, um, whatever. Uh-huh. A and party I, animal would just oh, like, yeah, fuck no, out and get like, 21. No, ID and that's now. the thing. It's like, I'm not, I'm not an introvert to where I'm not going to do anything, but I'm not Extrovert. somebody who's going to like, just be like, oh, dude, it's Friday, Saturday night. I got to go out. I got to go out. And so, you know, I made like a couple friends, you know, they'd have some like apartment parties, whatever, it'd go, uh, and, but I was just like, dude, you know, like this is, it didn't feel like college at all. Cause FGCU, you know, it's a small, small, a lot of kids, but a small campus, it's like 15,000 kids, which is a lot, That's but good. I'd say it's the same size school as like St. Stephen's is from like the middle school to the like gym. Okay. Like that's the size, like that's, that's the size the of the size actual, of no, that's the size of like the, like the, the building portion of camp. All the okay. buildings are together. It's not like you have one building here, one gotcha, building. Here. It's gotcha. all like connected. And there's no football, which you're f- again, I'm not, I'm not like, obviously like sports. I, I like, I love sports and, and it's not like I'd go to every football game and just be like, Oh yeah. Like FGC till cool I die. Like but it's, but it's like, you know, you know, you got football, you got some excitement, you know, there's tailgates, you know, like people, co- people come yeah. from all over to just watch. And so it just like, it gave off of really high school or non-college vibe. And like, it, it, it made me really miss St. Stephen's. And I wasn't like, I didn't love, love St. Stephen's, like where I was just like, but you know, I didn't hate St. Stephen's. I, I liked St. Stephen's. And so it made me like miss St. Stephen's. I was like, that's fucked. Like you shouldn't, you shouldn't be missing high school when you're yeah. in college. And so, you know, I talked to my parents. And I was like, you know, like I for sure got a transfer. Like there's no way, but I had the lease for the whole year. That's the big thing. And um, I talked to like some of my old teachers, like Mr. Unelli, and they were like, you know, like just see after this semester. And I, I wanted to give it another chance. Yeah. Like I wanted to give it till the, and it wasn't like my grades were like bad yeah. or like I had, I had A's, B's, like one, one class I, I did, I didn't do so hot in, but, uh, you know, so I was like, I was, I was just, I was staying, mm-hmm. I was floating and, uh. Yeah, but second semester got a lot better. You know, I yeah. like. I think a big part of it was I wasn't like looking. I feel like a lot of times you got to look for yeah things to to do. Well, that's I talked about with maybe it was Dawson or something. Like in these big schools, especially, you know, when we're in little schools, we don't have to put that much effort in to talk to people. You know, mm-hmm. you're in the same classes with same people. But if you're not, you know, like at FSU, if I didn't try to get involved or meet people or talk to anyone. No one's going to try to do it to me, you mm-hmm. know, so you have to get involved uh-huh. and shit like that. Yeah, I was, I was, I think also I was like spent the whole semester relying on like three or four like friend, like good yeah. friends. And it was just kind of like, you know, if they weren't doing anything that I'd be like, oh, dude, like what, you know, what am I yeah. going to do? And so second semester came, you know, like I had some, I think also the change in classes, like taking different yeah. classes was a big thing. Met some new people like, you know. Uh, turned 18 fucking hell so much so you know started like going so now out. what can you do because you're 18 you just well, can so, go out well, to so, yeah now like I can actually like go to clubs and stuff cause you know before yeah. people would be like oh I'll come to the club with us I'd be like I'd have to like cause nobody knew I was 17 like yeah. I obviously like if a girl comes up to me like you know yeah, I'm not I'm gonna 18. be like yeah I'm 17 like like come rape like, me yeah I was like <laughs> no like not yeah I turned 19 in February <laughs> so I was like so you know I can go to like the bars now uh just that, that's just like the one thing uh, really is yeah because like, now cause, you can't cause, vape you can't smoke uh-huh. that, that's well because i talked to my parents about that and i was like you know besides voting no, no absolutely now. no but because yeah, you know in check because yeah. you know my parents are check i mean when i turned 18 like all my family and uh like are like oh like can't wait till you're in check. Like we'll do shots and stuff. And I was like my dad like on my birthday card goes like bars are open in prague and stuff like that so but here it's like what the yeah. fuck like no, literally now no point in turning 18 or yeah. no benefit no benefit and so the, i think the like just the clubs and stuff was the biggest part because there's no uh like frat houses yeah. at fgcu like the big ones you know mm-hmm. where you see like these frat parties it's a lot of like off campus stuff and it's just like it's just not not the typical like party school and yeah. so that was the biggest thing and uh 
Also, I had like uh, a good friend that I used to play tennis with. I told you about Connor. Okay. And he reached out about club tennis, and I was like, you know, like I don't know if that's a little below me, but I was like, you know, fuck it, I'll. I'll yeah. I wanted to hit a Beggars little bit. Beggars can't be choosy, right? And so you know, I did it, and it, it's fun. Like yeah. it's, I think it's. I mean, it's kind of over now, but like you know, I'll still go out and hit with them and stuff, and. Um, Tenn- I mean, now that I'm out of tennis, like a hundred percent, it's way more fun. Yeah, I just, was- just just fucking around, kind of too. But there's also like part of me that's like, I don't want to fuck around because I know I can actually like. I spent so much time doing it, like I don't want to just. No, but it's like, well, I was talking to my buddy, and I'm like, because my mother, she's a head coach. I told you already, mm-hmm. Manti. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fucking hilarious to me. Anyways, so she's like, hey, Magnum, come out, hit with my buddy, Jacob. He was on the podcast. And I'm like, fuck it. Like, I know he can hit. Hopefully, I can uh-huh. hit. So I get one of his rackets I'm playing, and it was fun. But before that, I'm talking to my buddy, uh, Nige, who was also on the podcast. I'm like, you know what's funny is I could – this is the first time in my life I could honestly call her and say, like, yeah, I don't want to play tennis. That's what makes it so much uh-huh. better. The ability to say, if you really didn't want to – I don't want to and just not have to do right. it. Makes it feel so much freer than no motherfucker. Like if you say no, it doesn't work. That like there's my, a fucking system, syntax uh, error there, you know? That was that was my parents because a lot of times, uh, you know, when I was playing these tournaments, uh, like to- more towards the end when I stopped playing tennis at like 15 or 16, I'd, you know, if I didn't want to go, like my parents would sign me up to a tournament. They're like, yeah, you got a tournament this weekend in Orlando. I'd be like, I don't want to play. And they'd be like, no, you're playing it. Yeah. And, you know, like if I was playing somebody pretty decent, like I'd kind of tank, you know, I wouldn't want to. And my parents would punish me for that. They'd be yeah. like, you know, you're not, you're grounding for two weeks, you know, no going, no going out with I, friends. Once, I don't think I even tanked it, but I was accused of tankery uh-huh. by my father playing uh Yvonne. You know Yvonne? Uh, Big ass yeah, Russian yeah. kid. Oh, wait, what's his name? I, I don't, don't know his last Yashkin. name. Yashkin. Or y- something something with a Y. Bro, I don't know. <laughs> I remember it was Yvonne Big Russian. Uh-huh. I saw him like a year ago. And I I, I think I tanked. Like he, he beat my ass. Uh-huh. And I probably could have played better. And my father said, no TV for the rest of your life. And I was like nine or 10 or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck, like, I can't wait till I'm 18 and uh-huh. I can watch TV. Like, I was already planning for it. And then it turned out he only held it together for nine months. So I went, <laughs> I went nine, nine months, months with no TV at like 10 years old because I tanked a match. And I didn't even think I tanked. I just thought I played shitty. You know, the kid that, beat me. That was my parents. They'd be, you know, n- you know, no, no going to your friend's house this way. And we were like, we were little. So it'd just be like, you know, we'd go to a friend's yeah. house, like play video games, whatever. And so I'd tell my friends at school and they'd be like, like, what? So are they not going to like let you play tennis this week or something? I'd be like, no, no it's complete opposite. Like usually when, when kids like misbehave, they're like, Oh no, no, no baseball, sports, no yeah. soccer this week. But it's like, fuck dude, if you, you, you play, you're playing twice yeah. as much. And I was like, and I think that's what made me dislike tennis. Like made me quit kind of it was like, I'm and I'm not like, I have a work at like with that. So like, I didn't mind that, but it was just like, it was just so much I think pressure and just everything. Well, yeah, it's like tennis has created my work ethic. I think, Mm -hmm. you know, that's made me where I don't like if I tell myself you have to do this, there's no like processing in my brain of, oh, it hurts or oh, Mm -hmm. I don't want to like, no, you just fucking do it. But at the same time, like when doing it with something that you don't like, like, you know, tennis, you create this combative relationship Uh of like, no, I don't want to do it. Like I'm it's gratuitous pain. Like when I have to do something and it's going to cause me pain, but it's going to benefit my life. Uh Work ethic pays off. But if I'm just out there breaking my knees, and I feel like shit and I don't even want to be at, like, I don't want to uh-huh. play tennis. I don't want to do any of this. You feel like, what the fuck? I feel like something people who don't play tennis don't know is a lot of people that play tennis hate tennis. Like genuinely, like I, 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 I have like not met many people who hate their sport as much as tennis players oh, yeah. do. Well, because most, I think, tennis players, like the serious, like it's probably a lot of things that are at a super high level. Yeah. When you start playing tennis at three, guess what? You weren't three years old with the racket saying, Mommy, Daddy, I want to play tennis. It was mm-hmm. Mommy and Daddy saying, put the, You're going to fucking play tennis. Well, especially like me and my brother and my sister, yeah. too. Like we were born with the tennis racket yeah. in our hand, basically. Because your dad so. was a pro. Yeah. And so. And he won a few. What, what did he, he win? He, he, won, he won the US Open in doubles. So. It's pretty fucking fun. Yeah. Right? Like, so, so we were kind of born in that tennis fan. But I, I don't think. 
that there was that classic like pressure of being a pro tennis. Like there was none of that from my dad because because he understands it. Because yeah. unlike many, he especially had tennis to go parents, it. like a lot of parents who have no no clue what yeah. they're doing are usually the craziest. But parents. here's the other thing you want to think about a little bit crazier. Imagine this. Imagine you, you don't have that much money. You know, imagine you aren't that comfortable and your father decides that tennis is going to be your fucking ticket to the gold mm-hmm. promised land. Imagine if you got an investment of, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and you got no way to make it back. You are going to yell and scream and push that kid, your fucking child, to the limit because, you know, you've invested everything, not just time, not just money or not just effort, money, everything. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more on the line. Like this is your fucking like if you don't make it, kid. What what are we? We're gonna be working at fucking Dunkin' Donuts. And it's and it's not like the other sports where college is like a stepping stone to the pros. There, if you're not pro by sixteen, seventeen, yeah. you're you're not gonna make it. Like yeah. you see Coco Goff was pro mm-hmm. at fourteen. Like it's insane. But you but you know, I don't I don't know what's the cause a lot of the pros, like they they had crazy parents. Yeah. Like but a lot of them didn't. So I but don't like really, Fed, like I don't think Fed's parents are yeah, crazy. But like Maria, Maria's parents were crazy. V, uh, Williams, yeah. uh, the guy was insane. Like, I mean, uh, it's a mixture of I think uh-huh. like talent wins at the end of the uh-huh. day. But your you kid, know? you have to want it too. But if the kid, like, all right, like Fed, like Fed is, in my opinion, very, very, very fucking talented. The mm-hmm. way the guy plays, just everything. It's so beautiful. He's uh-huh. the perfect fucking tennis uh-huh. player. Uh-huh. So it can't not be talent. You know, I'm sure he works hard, but there have to be, Nadal's got to work harder than him. Uh People like that, for even these guys are way less. They've got to work and push and build muscle. Like, he's not that big. He's he's just, he's perfect. He's 6'1", 6'2", the perfect weight, the perfect wingspan. Mm -hmm. Like, everything about him is perfect. So you mix that with actually liking the sport, which I think he does. Uh I think he's uh obsessed and loves tennis. Then he's got it, you know, but if you don't have that talent, you need something to push you over that, you know, I think that's also in a lot of sports. uh, I mean, I know tennis more than any other sport, but there's a certain like the hard work can only take you to a certain point. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of parents and even like players struggle to realize is like, no matter how hard you work you're probably not going to like make it ma- make it, but you're not going to beat that guy. That's like super talented yeah. and, and also and works hard. hard. Like you can, okay, well, you can, you can go to the gym like twice yeah. a day. He'll go once you can do those extra sprints, extra, yeah. but he's got that little bit. And then, it's, and then they get frustrated. It's like the arc. And I felt it a hundred percent. Cause I was like, not bad was, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. under tens, under twelves, yeah. but I hated it. But just because of my parents may, or my father making me play and just being this, who I was, I was able to play pretty good. Mm-hmm. I was not talented, in my opinion, at all. I had negative talent. My body, I'm not built for the uh-huh, sport. Uh-huh. I don't like running. I don't like tennis. Like Everything was wrong. But just out of pure willpower by my father, through me, uh-huh. I was able to be pretty good. But then it started getting a little tougher and I really hated it. And at that point, it's just... That's like the, the carrying capacity yeah. kind of for... I can't follow through. I'm too tired. I'm too, you know... Now it's way easier. But there's no way for me to push through to that next level. And mm-hmm. I th- think that happens to a lot of people. Even like my parents and stuff, they realize, well, he's not going to hit the pro, so let's just dive it and go to college. Uh-huh, you know, uh-huh. college isn't a bad thing. No, it's, it's not. You know, but I feel like a lot of parents at the end of the day, they come to realization like, Fuck. Like they come to the idea. Uh-huh. There's no way to break through that next that wall. I mean, it's I'm but but if you usually look at like all these athletes, what's interesting is like these great ones didn't have like fathers who like I, I don't think Federer's dad like played tennis or anything. I mean, Nadal comes from like a sport family, but like I don't know. a lot of these guys like don't. So I, I just. But that's where it's it's in you. Dude, like Ronaldo, like even Ronaldo, like all these guys, like it's it's in them. But if you got it, you got that's the thing. If you're gonna do it, you know, if you're gonna be pro, if you're gonna be the best, like your brother, mm-hmm. you know. He's sixteen, he's already doing very, very, very well. Yeah, you know? Uh-huh. So 
that's where it starts showing like, okay, mm-hmm. you're doing good. Other kids, you know, fed all these guys, women, you know, this Coco Groff or whatever. Uh-huh. She's winning shit like at this age. Uh-huh. Like that's cr- that's when you see, okay, she'll be good at 20. Uh-huh. If you're not doing great by, right by, now yeah. at 15, you're, you're, you know, if you're not a 14 year old playing the 18s, get get lost. Mm-hmm. Go to college, man. I, uh, and that's why I think, like, also for my brother, he's in, like, best case scenario for him right now. Because, you know, he, he, he likes it. Yeah. He lo- like, I wouldn't say he loves tennis where he's just, like, Thinking about itching to get day, out yeah. there. But, you know, he doesn't hate it. He works hard. He, he does yeah. the work. Uh, you know, my dad obviously understands tennis very well. And he doesn't, he doesn't like, he's not pushing. Push uh, obviously, he pushes him. But it's not like. We got to be on the court yeah. three times a day. He's like, okay. And he doesn't, he doesn't coach him usually at tournaments. Like he'll mm-hmm. let the, the USTA yes, guys does. just, just take it away. Like go to terms. Cause and that, that's, that's what I think it takes also is like, you need to have the, that understanding of it. Cause if you don't, you're just forcing, you know, you, you always get what your parents do. Yeah. do. So, you know, if your dad was like forcing you to do school and now you're forcing that uh, like on yeah. your kid for tennis or whatever. So, but he's, he, if he wants it and he's got he's got the you know yeah. there's no reason he shouldn't be able to it's uh there's a lot of factors you know that lead mm-hmm. into it but your th- parents aren't the one that make you mm-hmm. you know it's it's, it's you, it's you. They, they can help you certain experiences can help you but at the end of the day especially when it comes to sport like shit like that it's just what you got you mm-hmm. know because you can tell somebody run faster so much but if they don't actually run faster there's no fucking point, mm-hmm. you know. I think I think that's what the like what parents yeah. and even like bad coaches struggle to realize yeah. is you it's ultimately up to them. Like you can tell him you know hit your serve like out wide more or whatever, but and he'll do it, but then then it comes to the match when there's an important point and he doesn't like he just doesn't get it. You got to get it. Yeah, and it's insane like for me I don't, I don't even get it, but it's some like, there, well, I do get it. <laughs> it's like a sense of maturity. Uh-huh. Cause when I used to play, like I would play mindlessly. Like I would literally, here's what I'd do. I'd go out there and I could hit and I could rally and I just would zone out and I would imagine like a different world. Mm-hmm. Literally just imagine like shooting machine guns and having fun <laughs> and like <laughs> you know exactly like just doing like fun shit like I'm, i did the same shit in math class i knew i told my buddy i'm like i you know i know math class is this bad uh-huh. all i think about math class is how to squat not how to bench the worst the, the that squat. was the, i remember freshman study hall we uh you, you kept getting in between the chairs the and, dips each, and yeah. shit. But anyways, but now when I play, I feel like my tennis IQ has raised. Uh-huh. I haven't played tennis for like two years, say. Haven't really thought about tennis at all either. But now I feel like I understand how to play in the court. And I know when he's going out wide, odds are it's going to be a short ball uh-huh. right cross. Uh-huh. You know, I'm already running to it. I never used to do that. I never had any comprehension of that's how you play tennis. And now it's... I feel like my brain has just developed and gotten more. See, for me, it was kind of the opposite, or not opposite, but like you know, obviously, you know, I had I had some talent, but I I always like really understood the game, the game, yeah. And obviously, I do now too, and that's why I was like, you know, I'll be watching my brother's match with my dad, and like he'll miss a shot, and I'll be like, oh, it's because he didn't like move yeah. his legs or something. My dad would be like, yeah, like he'll look at me and be like, yeah, yeah. he was like kind of like proud, and I'm like, fuck yeah, <laughs> but uh. But I, and I never had what like my brother has in terms of you know like physical like obviously he's capability he's fucking like six six eight at sixteen years old yeah I'm not saying I'm short or anything but like but like that's the other thing like in modern tennis he's got a perfect body for uh-huh. you know modern tennis the bigger you are you know if he's mildly coordinated mm-hmm. you don't really need a whole lot more if you can fucking hold serve you can win period. and I, and, I, and I think the best thing for him is. He, I don't think he like understands the game as much as like maybe you or I. Yeah. But probably more than me. I don't no, understand no, like, a no, lot. But. No, but but I'm saying like he's got. He doesn't like. I don't think he thinks yeah. as much as he probably could or should. But he's got but, the talent. But but also he's got that kind of like just that feel yeah. for the game installed in him because he because you know his his father. Yeah. Our father was <laughs> played, so he just kind of he just kind of yeah. gets it. it. Just it's you, and Natural. that's how you know. When it's like you, you can just like watch yeah. somebody and be like, okay, yeah, like he gets it. He gets it. And then imagine if he starts thinking a little bit more. And then and that's he, just gonna come with age. He's he's, 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 you know, a he's baby. 16. He just like when I was uh-huh. sixteen, I did not understand anything. The only reason I could play decent was because 
Uh, like I just yeah. fucking <laughs> hit the ball and I, I knew how to hit the ball. You know, uh-huh. that was it. It wasn't, there was no strategy. Like now I can out strategize people mm-hmm. on the court. What the fuck? Like, how's that work? I don't know, but it's just development. You know, uh-huh. you're, he's going to get smarter uh-huh. as long as he doesn't like do anything too detrimental nah, to his yeah. brain. Like I'm sure he's got a decent head on his shoulders, you know, and then mm-hmm. you just keep getting better. Well, I think even for him, like he's, you know, around all these older people. And that was the same for me because I was always around older people, you know, because, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, everybody, you're year and a half yeah. older, well, whatever. You were young for a grade. I was young. And so I was always around older kids. kids and so is he because yeah. you know he plays with these 18 and he plays with like 20 yeah. year olds and so he's just like maturing a lot faster which i think is good for him too and i think which is also like for me it was it helped me out in uh you know something other than like other than tennis you know just like in life just like getting a, be, being able to hold conversations with like adults just kind of dumb things like that but it's like i wrote my um uh, my common app application uh-huh. okay for you for those of you that don't go to college or didn't go to college watching this, you got to like do all these applications. Yeah, yeah, and you got to write an essay. And I wrote my essay about actually this fucking uh, quote about persistence and pressing on. And all right, fuck it. I'm okay, going to read, read it. I'm going to read, read the quote. Okay. This has been hanging on my father's wall for an infinite amount of fucking years. And then he gave me this and it was in my room. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than an unsuccessful man with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education alone will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Okay? Or omni- omnipotent. That's how you actually say it. I've been correct on that multiple times. Anyways, so what this means is basically persistence and determination is the only thing that will get you through anything in life. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's pretty fucking simple. We all can agree on that. Everyone knows that working hard will lead to success. You know, everyone knows it. But here's the thing. Here's what I wrote about my paper. It was a realization for me. You know, I didn't really... So I went go to school. I did easy... Middle school was easy. I did good there. Mm-hmm. Freshman, sophomore year, I did kind of shitty. Like, I definitely took... Those were your first a, two years at yeah. St. Stephen's, right? Or, no, when you my come first to- two years were seventh, eighth grade. Oh, oh, so I did... Oh. I came out the gate, I was doing good. And then I okay. went to high school, and, like, I was fucking up. Like, freshman, sophomore year, wasn't doing that great. And then junior year, when I had to write... Or junior, senior, senior year, uh-huh. whatever. But junior year, I came to realization, I'm like, no, this is how you work hard. Like, I realized, and I can't even explain how you work hard and how you press on and do persistence but it's not just you know running in fucking circles Mm -hmm. it's being able to work hard move think about it and then have to adjust and have to pivot and pivot and pivot i i think it's like one of those things where working hard like you don't stop to realize you're like oh fuck i'm working hard it's only the opposite you're like you know that you're not working hard so you really know that you're working hard when you don't even you know what i'm saying kind of so Here's like what I, what I'm saying is like okay so say you're just some like scrub fuck fuck up and you're like oh dude like I gotta start working hard like fuck yeah. like I'm just but then you know you you start doing your shit or whatever yeah you don't stop you're like man I'm working hard you're yeah. just like you're just fucking doing it and like yeah. and then and then the success I get, comes I in get like, what you're saying and that's true I think to a large extent but for me it was like I always and I had I was able to work hard and I wasn't a scrub that was the mm-hmm. other thing but I had to get used to a different like mode of operating uh-huh. you know I had to understand that well working hard and just studying and doing certain things maybe aren't gonna lead to the most uh, payment, you know, afterwards. Mm-hmm. I got to work hard, but I got to also hustle it a little, you know. Maybe right. maybe my working hard's like cheating a little. No, and, and, and everybody's this, working and hard is out, different. You know, doing a little bit of a scam. But I came to a realization like, okay, now I know how to work hard. Now I know how to just keep pushing. Because I came to the realization that if I keep fucking doing it, I will succeed. You know, if I keep just fucking hitting it. It's like this fucking YouTube shit. Like... You think any? You think I'm thinking I'm gonna succeed at 115 subscribers? No, like mm-hmm. that's not success. But you're doing. But you're I'm doing like, it. fuck! Like if I just can keep pounding it, here's the thing: 
I don't even know what success is. Is success a thousand subscribers? Mm-hmm. Is success five hundred? Is success seven hundred and fifty? I never am able to monetize, but I pivot somewhere else. You know, as long as I'm just progressing, mm-hmm. that's all that matters to me right now. It's the same shit in school. Like I came to a realization that if I just can keep progressing, I'm gonna keep getting better grades. And then junior senior year, you know, I was getting. 3.2s, 3.0s, freshman, sophomore year, and I was able to graduate with a weighted over Mm 3.5. So I really caught up junior and senior year. I didn't really change in my mind. Like I wasn't working harder, but I figured out just how right. to do it. You know, and, and he, that's even I asked you before. You know, what, so what? Like, what are you gonna do now? And you're just like just this podcast. Like, you just got to keep keep working at it. And so your uh, your common app was a little. Philosophical there You Fuck fucking yeah, found bro. yourself there dude Harvard didn't let me in though the co- It wasn't <laughs> remember, good enough I remember that I'm like where'd you apply You're like FSU and Harvard Well I figured it like this If I don't get into FSU I shouldn't go to school uh-huh. That was my rationale uh-huh. Like that was for me Like that was my mark That uh-huh. I needed to hit And I'm like And then Harvard Like They did the common app you know, you could have written more essays and all that But I'm like For fucking 50 bucks Or even 200 bucks Whatever it was I'm like what the fuck's the point? Like it's Harvard. Like just, right. and I did the math. They let one Magnum in every four years. Like they'll let the averages. So they'll let in 0.25 Magnums a year. Yeah. But if it was the, if it was a four year cycle, you know, there's a one in four. I chance. mean, to be honest, I know no other Magnums. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it could work, but it didn't work. And I ended up going. Dude, I wrote seven, my seven. common app was, I talked about like, uh, like firsts Mm -hmm. and I talked about like being the first person in my family, like my new, my nuclear family to go to college. Cause you know, my dad, my dad went straight to tennis and my mom kind of followed, followed along and raised us when we were little. And now, I mean, now she got her like real estate license and everything. So I, and I mean, I was also the first person to be born outside Czech. So my whole family's Czech and, you know, and here, and we even talked about it was just, how I'm not saying I had a difficult childhood at all, but just <laughs> how tough it was, like even applying to college and yeah. my parents just not knowing any, not, not being able to help me at all. Like they want to help me, but they just can't. Like they don't yeah. know what SAT is, GPA, like just these small things that, you know, you take for granted or your, your dad being like, oh, I, I, I went to, I went to Texas Tech, like, yeah. you know, just like that stuff. And so, I mean, it didn't, I don't think it was a well written essay, but. That was that. That was that was what she talked about. It, and it honestly, yeah, and it honestly makes you think about like you know, it really like you gotta go to the root of like what you are. Yeah. To write to write it, and it yeah. so, it sounds really like dumb. It's like a trivial little essay, but you know. No, it, it definitely like I remember I thought about it and I was happy with it by the end of it. You know, I was happy with what I because uh-huh. this thing, bro. I've been reading it, and that's the other thing. Like, you know, motivational shit on Instagram. Like, you see David Goggins. Like, no shit. I, I know started that. following him a few days ago. Dude, I, saw, I, I don't saw follow videos. him. I can't. Like, that shit's too much for me. Because I already, like, I know it, you know? He's not going to be the one that tells me, uh-huh. working hard, motivation, you know? When you think you're done, you're just doing fucking, you know, you've just done 80%. You got 20% left or 40%, whatever the mm-hmm. fuck he always says. Mm-hmm. It's like this shit. I've been reading this quote since I was... This is before I could read, basically. Like, my father told me probably about this when I was two. Okay. You know, and it's always been in his office. I've always seen it, and it's always been around. So I've always known that these principles are correct. But if you just tell somebody, work hard, what's it's, it mean? Uh, yeah. Like, you want me to dig a hole? Okay, it'll be hard work, but what the fuck am I doing? You know? But you realize, you know? You, you start to understand, oh, I got to work a little different. You know, I got to be... I think the, I think just a huge part of that too is it comes with age. Yeah, like you're not you're not gonna get it at at fifteen. So you you know you'll you'll get it. But I think the difference between like I feel like eventually everyone will get it. But you know it's the difference between getting it. At, okay, okay. I don't think everyone gets it. I most, don't think a most lot of people. And here's the other thing. You know, think about this. If you're a fourteen year old, like no. Uh-huh. Maybe Nadal's not the most talented player ever. He's a great ass player. You can't mm-hmm. say he wasn't. But imagine if he understood that at ten. He just understood it. But that that's the difference and between like successful exactly. is like knowing it, even knowing it at like thirty. Yeah. But like, but then you know what sucks is once you're retired, once you're done with all yeah. this shit, and you realize it at seventy, and you're like, fuck, dude. If if I if I knew this twenty years ago, I could have. 
could yeah, be living Yeah, but at that point, like, you don't even talk about those yeah, people. Because those people, their life is just, it's over. Like, I hate mm-hmm. to say it, guys, but if you're 70 and you just figured out what this means. Once you hit 70, you're just dead to society. <laughs> May, hey, maybe you can make your life work, but, you know. It's, it's tough. It's <laughs> fucking tough bro everybody always says like when you're on the podcast you know how can't you say it because at the end of the day like it is tough you know Mm -hmm. just fucking do it if you don't do it you gotta wait and it's like even this you know i kept thinking about it and when you keep thinking about stuff like that it starts actually developing you you know Uh like you, you start to see the complexities even if you don't really you know see it and can't explain it you feel it you know, you start to gain an understanding. That's what I was saying. I think I got off track with like the motivational show on Instagram. Like that stuff pisses me off so much because I'll see like uh, recommendations for how to invest, recommendations for this, recommendations uh-huh. for that. And it's like that in every, like what I'm saying about this and everything. There's so much more complexity to it. You know, you can't just say buy something for a dollar and sell it for two and make money, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, but how are you going to buy it? How are you going to buy something that everyone wants? for a dollar and sell it for two. Uh You know, there's more complexity to it. You have to figure it out. I think a lot of those people are, you know, like, like if somebody, you know, like how you said to buy it for a dollar, sell it for two, that's what they did. Yeah. But they understand it. They, they know what to do it on. Like you can't just, you can't do that with everything. Like you can't every, cause every person's different and everybody's mentality is different. So you can't take the same mentality and apply and apply it to some, something that's, Completely but that's different. where things like this, they're so broad, help in a lot of aspects, you know? Mm-hmm. They help you, all right, this can work for sports, this can work for business, this can work, but you have to truly understand oh, it's, it's it. A, it's a universal you know? universal truth. But but again, there's like other things to it. Even yeah. even once you, you've got it, it's still mm-hmm. constant. There's still more. Like, I feel like I understand it, but guess what? Look at me. Uh-huh. I live with the fucking compound. Like I, I'm not full of riches, and you know all that. No, shit. but like, but you 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 get it. Like you're you're on your way. Like I I don't think I can like really say that. Like okay, so like I've never been the hardest working person in the room. You know, I feel like I've I'm definitely just like up until now been kind of underachieving and not under but just you know just yeah I get what you're saying. Like kind of that's a you know Casey Neistat right yeah. You're doing like your he, maintenance level. Uh-huh. He had that. He, he had like a good analogy where it's like life is like a uh, what's that thing called at the airports that like you don't. You, oh, ask. Uh, not an escalator, but you know what I mean. I know conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. Sure. Like, you know, I if, only if got you, to the. It's like moving what, uh-huh. whatever. But if you, I get you know, if you if you stand still, you go backwards. Yeah. If you know you walk, you you kind of stay in the same place, yeah. and you got it. You got to run. To, you know, move forward in life. And I feel like I'm kind of just like, oh, you so you're saying going against it? going against it. Sorry. Yeah. Going okay. against it. So, you know, you walk, you're just going backward. Yeah. I mean, you stand, you stand still, so you, you walk. Backwards. And so I feel like I'm kind of just like walking just walking, you know, and I feel like that's OK yeah. to a certain point. I mean, and I feel like that's we're at the age like yeah. 18, 19, 20, 20, you, you know, yeah. where you got to kind of start figuring that shit out. But like, I mean. You're figuring, you're figuring your shit out. You figured out that you do, that's not what you want to do. Like, you know how many kids are at fucking college that feel the same way as you, but they're just, like, miserable? Like, that was me first time. semester. Like, I don't have the balls to leave like that. My parents are fucking murder. And, I, like, I didn't want... I wanted to leave, but inside I knew I couldn't, and I didn't really want to. Well, too, to me, like, for me, I saw an avenue. You know, if someone uh-huh. else who doesn't have any other... I like, didn't have an avenue. You know, yeah. like, for me, it's like I hopped off one belt where all I can do is walk. And now I'm getting onto another one where I can kind of jog maybe a little, mm-hmm. you know? But I had that ability to jump over. If you can't jump over, you know, your best bet is just keep walking or keep on that belt and wait till you can run, you know? So it's... Yes certain things you know you just have to kind of you have to understand where you're at like Uh you said you know you wanted to but you can't really i don't think it'd be a smart decision i don't think it's a smart decision for most people Uh you know because i feel like most people probably not saying i'm special or anything but most people want to fuck it up you know and it's like what i told you about like you have to be totally straight when you make these decisions because if you're just gonna drop you're getting blah or whatever you're Uh getting fucked up and then you drop out and then you just keep getting fucked up and you're just having that party like what the fuck? Like now, what? Are you, now you're really hurting well, yourself. You're, you're you know? even like a, more at a better place, I think, than most people who like say have a four point in college because you know that's not for you, and you know your place right now. Yeah, and like 
yeah, you could be like successful in a certain aspect. Like obviously, okay. Like if you determine success is making hundred thousand dollars a year, okay. Like you got it. But if you don't know your place, like yeah. what are you really working towards? Like, I feel like once you stop working towards something, then it's just like, you're kind of complacent with whatever you're at. And like, that's why, I, that's why I didn't want to leave. Cause I know like if I leave, how am I going to like, for me, school is like an avenue to, you know, like an internship and then to improve, to improve to the make internship. Your life better. That's yeah. why I was telling you, like, you know, you're joking about being like an errand boy. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I'm a fucking errand boy right, right now. That's why I tell people they're, you know, it uh-huh. is what it is, but I'm not necessarily like upset about it. There's nothing. Cause I see it like, all right, if I got to put, you know, everyone says find mentors and all this shit, like Gary Vee and all these people mm-hmm. say it. And I'm like, shit, well, my father's not necessarily my mentor. Like mm-hmm. that's a little too much, but he is like not a dumbass, you know? Mm-hmm. And I do like respect his ideas and whatever. So if I can be his errand boy, so what? I'm going to learn more from doing his dirty shit. You know, I got to go fix shit. I got to go take care of the bar. I got to, uh-huh. yo, Magnum, do this. Yo, Magnum, do that. Yesterday, I'm fucking, you You see my hands are fucking yeah. ripped to shit. <laughs> my father gets like a dump truck load full of rocks because he wants to rock our house to make it dog escape proof. Okay. And I'm shoveling fucking rock all day. And is that really, did I learn anything? Maybe not, but you know. You learn how to shovel rock. Uh-huh. You know, I know for, here's what I do know. I know for a fact that if I ever need to shovel some fucking rock or do some labor, I can fucking do it. I think it's also, it's better to do something like that where you understand your place doing it than do something that maybe will directly lead, like, like work somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, yeah, that'll lead to a promotion or whatever. But if you, you don't get why you're there or why you're doing it, then it's pointless. Then it's much better to shovel rocks and realize like, I think that's also my dad. Like my, you know, my dad, obviously all he knows really is tennis Yeah, and I'm not going to be a tennis player. And so how can he help me? But like, but I get that, you know, the stuff that he applies to doing what he loves tennis, I can apply Mm -hmm. to other shit. It's like tennis. You think I'd be able to shovel that rock if I didn't play tennis? No chance. No fucking chance, you know? Or if I didn't go through that experience Uh of whatever that changed my fucking mind to get that work ethic, you know? Uh There's no way. There's no way if I was some totally other kid, I could have done that. And I think that's that's also like a sign of maturity is realizing that these lessons can be applied through by different things through different, like literally everything. Like, I think that's why tennis, you know, I think even though I'm not the biggest fan, I think it's the best sport in the world because it teaches you so much. I think it's... All right, not now we can have a uh, debate. <laughs> okay, okay. In the sense that it teaches you more than any other sport could teach you. How is that? I'd say... Would you, would you agree saying that tennis is one of the mentally toughest sports to do? Top, top... Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. I've not played a ton of sports. Okay. So I, I got to look at it more from just a theoretical imaginary uh, level. I think that there is a lot of mental toughness involved in tennis, but I th- mental toughness uh-huh. for sure. Like you got to deal with a lot of shit. And I think one of the big things is you're totally alone. And you know, w- there's no one else. Like if you're on football, you got, you got to be mentally tough and uh-huh. shit like that. But maybe if it's a little easier cause you got a team or stuff like that. You have support. Uh-huh. Tennis court, you know, you got your parents that want to fucking kill you, mm-hmm. and then you got the opponent who wants to kill you. You know, it, it's very alone. I think also, uh, well, because then I pl- I played soccer junior yeah. senior year, and even though I was much better at tennis than I was at soccer, I felt more comfortable playing soccer. Really? Because I knew that, like, okay, I fuck up, but like, I've got. 10 other dudes there that can not necessarily like make up for me being not for yeah. having a bad moment. But like, I just felt more comfortable knowing that it's not. And also, also like I have the coach yelling at me from the side, like telling me what to do. Tennis, tennis is the only sport in the world. No coaching. Yeah. But here's the other thing. Think about it like this. If you fuck up in tennis, who's going to get pissed at you? Yeah. Your dad. dad you fuck up in soccer. Whole fucking team. No, but like, yeah, yeah, no, I know. Up, you I don't give a fuck. You know, you're a fucking fifth. If any 18 year old wants to beef with me, go ahead. But you know, if I'm on court and your father's fucking pissed at you, that's a it's, little, there's uh-huh. a little more, especially when you're in sport family. You want yeah, yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? I, I get it, I get it's it. a lot more intense. You're a lot more stressed out. Imagine though you're a soccer kid and your dad fucking pushes you to play soccer and you fuck up. 
it's the same shit like tennis, you know, it's fucking, it can be very difficult. So for me, like me now, why I love tennis so much or so much, Uh why I like it a little bit more. No one gives a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm the only person who really like has to do it and no one else cares what happens, you know? Mm -hmm. So it makes it a lot less stressful and makes it better, you know? I think also uh, one thing that, do you you know Ashley Hobson? You know, uh, coach at Inspiration? Mm, Sure. So he, he talked to me a while ago, like when I was still there and... You know, he made a point that like tennis just really like brings out, you know, the the brain, even though, you know, it's a very physical sport, even though people, you know, don't yeah. get that part. But like you rarely ever see tennis players like go broke. Like you hear about all these football players, uh, basketball players, like yeah. just fucking up after. And they and they make 10 times more than tennis players. I, I think there's a lot of different like aspects. You know, yeah, yeah, no, I get that. Uh-huh, uh-huh, just, I get that. But like, it's know, just like that. Just tennis is so cerebral. Yeah. And it's it's not even necessarily thinking about oh where your opponent's gonna be. It's just like if you know you lose one match, you're done. Yeah, it's not like it's a season where you know mm-hmm. it's you, you have a well, certain also, amount of games here's guaranteed. Here's the other thing, you know, every dollar you make, oh, it's, you work it's completely for. dependent on how you, know? you play. Exactly. And if you're a football player, you get a contract. Get I remember it was easy. like Roddick or is one of them. We're talking like because they're all American, uh-huh, so they got uh-huh. baseball buddies and sure. shit, and they're like. Fuck the one thing that I wish tennis had was a guaranteed. Like, imagine if you could sign a contract and guarantee it, mm-hmm. you just be a good player uh-huh. and it'd be so much better. But you that's, know, it's not. You gotta uh, every dollar you earn, you earn. You know, it's like uh, you know Jack Sock, right? Yeah, he was uh, he was like top ten. He won a uh, Masters in Paris or whatever, and he just won his first match in like two years. Wow! So he went from making like I don't know, like three hundred fifty thousand, which is Good for tennis, just like top top twenty money. Yeah, or maybe not top twenty, top like 20, top, 50, yeah. top fifty money. And didn't make a dime. Yeah, for two. Okay, years. maybe maybe he did Price for first round exits. Yeah. Like made like forty thousand dollars for two years, and he wins a match, and he gets three thousand dollars for it. Yeah, and that's it's the and that's the down, that's the biggest you know? mental part. You know, you lose three tournaments in a row. Fuck, you got the Grand Slam coming up. You know. Yeah. If you win it, you, you, you know, because you yeah. got to pay your coach, you got to pay your expenses. Nobody on, yeah. else has to pay their expenses. Yeah. No, there's okay, besides like golf or something. But, you know, you, you're fine to Australia. Yeah. It's a $5,000 ticket. Yeah, it's a lot. Whatever, all know? that. So you, I you just got think people, you got, you're more paying for the people, you know? Uh huh. Uh-huh. That's the thing. It's not like a facility. You're not the one being, you're, it, you're not care getting provided. Yeah. You're providing. Exactly. And so, I mean, I just, I just think it's I think it's a great sport like in in, yeah. in that sense you know obviously like we, we, our both of our uh, Views uh, opinions on, are a little yeah. a little tainted but I'd say it's a little skewed on our side but it's a it's a pretty good sport but I wouldn't there. say it's the hardest sport there no is, no you know? I I wouldn't say it's the hardest I, I don't think you know I think it's mentally tough but I think a lot of fucking sports are mentally tough you want to say strategy. Every fucking, you know, when they're talking about running plays in football, yeah, football like, yeah. come on, like, that shit's fucking complicated, mm-hmm. you know? Because what happens if this guy moves a little bit more of that side? You know, you got to be able, these fucking quarterbacks got to be able to assess a fucking situation, take a snapshot and be like, all right, this is what I have to do and process it on their head. They're a fucking computer. You know, it's the same with tennis, but tennis, I don't know, you know? Uh-huh, so, yeah, I know. I get that. And I can't speak a lot on it because I never played football. I never uh-huh. did any of that shit. For me, what I always thought would be the best sport for my kids is like baseball. You know, like if so. I if I like sons or a son, baseball is I think the sport because it's chill. You know, all the baseball kids I've ever met have always been pretty good. You know, it's not some other sports. Baseball is cool. Baseball is American. You know, you still can be in shape. You can be fucking. You can be a big ass baseball. Player. You know, you can't yeah, play uh, tennis and, and be two ten. Right. They just that's why you, you know, stop playing. <laughs> yeah, that is, bro. I told my father. I said. I just want to get big enough where I can't fucking be on the court. <laughs> and that's it. But now that I've gotten bigger and stronger, I'm way better tennis player. I can fucking, all the balls I used to be tired to run to where I couldn't get, to, I can get to any ball. Like, it's insane. But, you know, it's what, anyways, so, so baseball would just be, to me, it's relaxed. It's easy. It's a team. It's more fun. You know, these guys, when they watch baseball, if you actually like baseball, I think it's really cool. Uh-huh. I think Definitely, like, want to have my kids play tennis. I, I, I think soccer, too, just kind of, like, you know. But I, I just... T- oh, golf, too. Golf is also a great, like, just... 
it's, I can't do golf. I'm sorry. I love like, golf. I know you talk about golf. golf. Dude, you and your dad fuck, love it, but yeah. like, fuck, I know it's, so it's, it's, slow. it's, it's, it, it is, but like, then again, like, it's just one of those sports that like sticks no matter like that's why you see all these old guys. That's why country clubs, yeah. the two sports they have, tennis and golf. And that I think that's why also people have a misconception about tennis, especially as being just like a, a pussy sport, you know, it's just people like fucking around. I've like, said it on here a ton of times. I'm like, tennis players are some of the most like psycho people. Like, oh my par- god. When it comes to partying and shit, like they're the craziest. Oh yeah, and just in general, like uh-huh. these people, like imagine no, tennis players are you have so crazy weird. Crazy parents <laughs> making you do crazy shit all day long. Guess what? You're gonna become a little fucking crazy. You know, you don't have mm-hmm. any way not to be crazy. You're mm-hmm. just gonna be a little fucking nuts. I don't know, dude. I mean, <sighs> fuck. I, like I think I think my dad did a great job of like raising us around sport, mm-hmm. where he like we did everything when we were little. We did golf, soccer, tennis. You know, karate and then yeah. a hockey too. Yeah. I love hockey. Hockey's the sport I wish because I think I could have been. Good you know, at it's hockey. tough. Floor, yeah, so we played it for one or no, we oh we played it for like two or three years and learned to ice skate. So now mm-hmm. it's just like those little like things. Like yeah. if I go, I can play golf with like with yeah. most people. I can play tennis with anybody. I can up, skate. Yeah. I can you know like roll even roller. Yeah. I love to roller skate now. Like I, think I go I through Robinson Preserve. Day. Yeah, Dude, I love to do it, and it's just like those bases. Of that, and I played soccer. Like I didn't play soccer for ten years, and then I did high school soccer, and I like I started like you know it was yeah. just like that. And so I think he did a really good job of like raising us around sport like that. Yeah. Do you remember uh, Sebi? You know Sebi Corda, yeah. right? Yeah. He played hockey with us too, and with like Joey Chavon. Remember uh-huh. Joey? And I mean, like, look at Sebi now. He's like two fifty ATP, like top two fifty ATP. He can hit a golf. He can hit a golf shot both ways, like le- lefty and righty. Yeah. He, he goes and plays hockey. Like it's yeah. like, it's like that. And he, I mean, he also had a dad, you know, who's obviously. Yeah. But really that also athlete. comes with just being a really good athlete or being athletically, you know. But you've got to have that base just yeah. from everything, and I think that's like. So I think he did a good job of that, and I kind of want to like have that too, where like my kids could just kind of do any do whatever they want. Yeah, but like at a certain age, like I feel like I think I wish my parents let me do that because you know when I was when I first came to Saint Stephen's was sixth grade, so I was like twelve. Okay, and I was like all these like you know all my friends were like football, like yeah. you know spring football. So I was like, oh mom, can I do like spring football? And she's like, absolutely not. Like really? you're gonna yeah, but they let me do spring football. They ended up letting me do spring football. I did it. And it was like two weeks or whatever, and. Then I was like seventh grade. I was like, I really want to do football. And they're like, no, no. no. Cause that's when like all the concussion stuff was like, they're like, no. And, and I, 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 I'm happy they didn't let me play, you know? Really? Uh, yeah, kind of. But I wish they would have let me kind of get away from tennis a little bit more. Like let me do other things at a later age. Like they let me do other things when I was like six, but okay. at like 10, you know, they were like, okay, you got to pick, but I didn't really get to pick tennis. Yeah. I kind of just. Which I get, but like yeah, but I think if you want to be the best in any of these sports, you've got you've got to do. There's yeah. no time, you know. Mm-hmm. You literally like that's why my father moved us here and all this shit, you know, because he like I think talked to some guy or something that had, like a really good like skier son or something, and my father was kind of on the fence about tennis and this and that. Like I played, but it wasn't like I also skied a lot stuff mm-hmm. like that. The guy's like, no, like it has to be everything. So, like, my father became upset, you know, so he had to be obsessed in order to get his son good enough or obsessed enough to try to play. You know what I'm saying? Uh Like, it has to be just all around that one sport, and you have to get in it young enough. Because if you don't, like, if I started playing tennis at 10, like, you know, come on, I could be a little fat fucking piece Uh of shit kid already, you know? Well, what, like, people who live in Bradenton who don't play tennis don't realize is Bradenton exists because of tennis. Bradenton is the tennis episode. It's, but it's like everybody you meet that plays tennis. Okay. 80% of the people you meet that play tennis in Bradenton are here simply because of tennis. You're, uh, you said you moved here I think, of tennis, I right? think 100% of people, a hundred percent of people that play tennis in Bradenton that are relatively young, uh-huh. you know, moved our, here for yeah, tennis. No. So like our high school team, my, it, all years really, but senior year, especially. So it was Kevin. Yeah. Came here because of tennis yeah. from China. Gleb. Gleb you. came from Russia. Me came from Czech. Uh, Max Bont, French French kid, came from you know, obviously France. And then 
who else was there? Five. And Petrov. Yeah. Petrov came from Russia. Like everybody. And that's, that's why like we're here and it's such a big, like, I mean, I'm still shot. Like people don't know what IMG is. Like, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like, in Bradenton? No, not in Bradenton, but like even around, yeah. they'll be like, they'll be like, like at FGC, I'll be like, tell, they're like, where are you from? I'm like, Oh, Bradenton. They're like, Oh, where's that? And I was like, Oh, it's like Sarasota. And yeah, they're but like, if you oh. don't know tennis, why yeah, but, really but, but even IMG? even any other sport, you know, yeah, I like football, football, lacrosse and stuff. But like fucking tennis, it's yeah. every single person you know knows it. That's yeah. where it's so. Well, common. IMG exists because of tennis, yeah. like Nick Volatieri. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, dude, it's so it's so big here. I mean, I, you got the Sharapova poster here, like fuck. Yeah, we used to have Fed and Safin. Safin was so fire. Yeah, she retired like two days, a couple days ago. Yeah, I saw it's that. It's crazy. Somebody sent me that I'm gonna have to take the poster down. Like, no, everyone <laughs> likes it because she has hard nipples in the picture. <laughs> They're like, that's so fucked up. Like, why do you have a? It's like a life size Sharapova yeah, picture. Oh, it's big, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I just have it for the nipples. Just the nips, guys. That's the only reason. Yeah. The poster collection's solid, though. Yeah, I've been acquiring, man. I'm working on it. Nothing here. I'm trying to reorganize it. Yeah, nice. Like I like this on the the Albert Einstein one. Yeah, I mean that's my entire life revolves around Einstein. I, I for, for some reason I have like memories of you and Einstein from like freshman year. You know why? I'll tell you why right now. I yeah, finished that. Finished that. Oh, yeah. Delicious. Um, I had this quote of Einstein, and it's one of my favorite quotes. Too. Can I can I guess what it is? What is it? The insanity one. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's such a great one. And I had it as the background on my iPad. Oh, that's that's what it is. That's why it was such a fire ass picture, like black and white, uh-huh. Einstein. And it's insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. Expecting, expecting a different, different result. result. And now, if you want to tie this into a previous conversation, that's why. See, to me, like a podcast, I said it, it's like a magazine article. Uh-huh. But it's even more than that. It's like, a, it's like an essay. Uh-huh. You know, literally, it's like, this is how I write essays. This is why I never was that great English because I'll start here, I'll go there, I'll you and know, you, and I'll tie it in. But it. like, say when I'm writing my essay, I'd be thinking about Einstein. You know, that fucking quote correlates directly to this quote mm-hmm. because if insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, what's hard work? Isn't hard work expecting doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a better result? Well, if that's the case, then hard work and uh, whatever, insanity, are pitted again. Yeah. So how the fuck's that work? Well, here's where you start realizing what hard work truly is. Uh Hard work isn't fucking hitting it the same time, same way every single time. It's realizing, well, fuck, I've hit it 12 times there and it doesn't work. Let me think and hit it harder there. Let me hit it harder. Uh Let me do it like this. You know, that's where you start to get this kind of, not battle, but there's a back and a forth. I think... Also, like, th- it makes you realize that there's a difference between, like, something being hard and something being difficult. Yeah. Because, like, you know, if, like, hard work, okay, hard work doesn't necessarily mean it's, like, super yeah. hard, but it's, you know, it may be difficult in a, in a way. Yeah. And it may be, like, easier in a way, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, hard work is more... Y- it's the way people look at it's wrong. You know, they're, they're looking at it to try to achieve some goal. Mm-hmm. But to achieve that goal, you can't just do the same hard work unless it's like defined. Like, okay, you know, you got to dig a fucking ditch. All right. Well, you know what you got to do. You got to fucking just dig that ditch. Uh-huh. And that's all it is. You got to get from point A to point B. Then you have to work hard and just mindlessly do it. But what happens if there's fucking obstacles in your way? You know, that's where you have to actually use your brain and think. And that's what's a different type of hard work. Mm -hmm. That's intently thinking about something, intently trying to figure out, okay, well, if I hit it here, you know, like it's like digging a hole. Digging a hole, if it's just dirt, is hard, you know. But if it's dirt with a root in it, you got to chop it a little. Yeah. yeah. No, I I, I never like, I mean, obviously I've never seen that quote, but I know know the Einstein quote well. But like, I like the way you tied it in. See, like the, yeah, it hel- See it helps, that would have gotten me like a, a nuance bit. point. Oh my something. gosh, yeah, that's we should yeah. you should t- tied that in with your comment. At. Maybe Harvard, fuck Harvard man, re- maybe I'll trans- send transfer them. season. <laughs> I'm gonna send them just all the podcasts and see what you guys want. Okay, I will question if so. Say now, you get an email tomorrow from Harvard acceptance for fall 
next year? Do you go? Do I have to pay? Uh, would that would that change your answer? Well, listen. If I could go there for free, it's like fucking gambling with house money. Obviously, I'm gonna take it. Uh-huh. You know, but if I had to pay, okay. Like, say you have to pay fifteen thousand dollars a year. See, like maybe at that point, I'd say yeah, fuck it, just because like I could say I went to Harvard. Uh huh. But realistically, like, would I stay there? Probably not. Okay. Unless something major changed. Like, there's really, I know there's nothing for me at school. I know school's not where I want to be. And even Harvard. Like, I've came to a realization that I really don't give a fuck where I end up. Okay. You know? So, so like, it's, so it's so like I'm planning for the future, but I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, right now, I'm just going to bang it. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm just going to do what I can, hustle, try to, try to... You know, find some niche, find some position where I actually belong versus try to just hop on a bandwagon and just ride it. So you think school, so school is the problem rather than the kind of school or the place? No, yeah. Okay. School is the issue. I okay. don't ever want to That's go what I was going to gonna say, say, like, do you think it was just FSU or you think it's just like... I think maybe, like... If I went to USF, I maybe was still like, gonna, like USF, a little, like a little bit happy, but yeah, you still it wouldn't, closer, it wouldn't be it. It was this, but it probably wouldn't have sent me into such a fucking tailspin, and uh-huh. I probably wouldn't have went so crazy. But it's almost better. It's almost better that I went. Because you realize, because it was such an extreme. You know, uh-huh. I like extremes. Because I kind of am ext- I'm either going to do it Or I'm not going to do it I'm either going to be bald Or I'm going to have Crazy ass hair You know I'm either going to be Really loud Or really quiet There's no Just floating in the middle I think you just Perfectly describe yourself <laughs> Well it's the truth No it is You know And that's what I like And so if I went To some middle of the road Like USF or something Maybe I would have Stuck around I wouldn't have been But when I went to FSU It was like getting Fucking hit Hard. Uh-huh. Okay, so I'm like, fuck, I'm knocked off balance. I don't know what I'm doing. So instead of, I just ducked out of the ring. I'm like, you want to get extreme? Okay, I'm jumping out of the ring. What are we going to do now? Now I'm going to fight a totally different fight. Uh-huh. So that's, it, it wasn't the type of school or stuff like okay. that, you know? So it's almost better. You know, maybe if I went to USF, it would have taken me two years to start a podcast. Right. You know? Yeah, I mean, you found, you found like your calling almost in a way by like, you know what I'm saying? You, you came to that to realization. Do, yeah. Like it's 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 the shitty situations yeah. that make you realize. Not not the good. You're never gonna realize anything in good yeah. situation. And it's like I talked with John about it. And you maybe saw it. Like how he was telling me because we'd always bullshit. Like in the morning, uh-huh. you know, at study hall, we had flirt with Miss Cotton, right. and then we just fucking chit chat. And I always was saying my crazy ass shit, like I uh-huh. do, you know. And he's like, dude, you should start a podcast. I remember him telling me senior year, but I was like, nah, like, nah, that shit's fucking buns. It's not what I want to do. Like, I'm not a personality. None of that. But then I realized, I'm like, bro, you actually, like, you want to do it. And Uh this is a way to actually make something of something you naturally like to do. Uh No, and like, I, I, because I knew you before you came to St. Stephen's. And I knew, I knew you were a little bit, a little bit, a little bit crazy, (laughs) but... Like I, I was, I was like, I, I, I'd say we were never like best friends, but like, no, uh, but like, I, I, I never like, hated you, but like, <laughs> <thanks. laughs> That's but like we all, we all, we Bro. could always, we could always talk, like, yeah, like always, always we understood each other, yeah, and I knew that like, if if somebody like if you asked me somebody who's to start a podcast, I'd say it was you because I knew you were like that. You you talked your mind, you can give a fuck like yeah. who it was to. What it was about, but like you could, you, you, you yeah. said it how it is, and like that's what you need for this. Yeah, that's why. And, that, and that's I think you also have like the. Oh, this may come out bad, but like the personality, like drop out, like you yeah. you have the balls to do it. Now I'm not saying you're dumb, you know, at all, but like you no, you I have the actual saying. like nobody yeah. most people don't have the balls to do that. So yeah, it's uh, I was the person that was gonna do it. Uh huh. Uh huh. And like that's just uh, no, 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 the extremes. Not, yeah. You know, uh-huh. I'm either gonna do it or not yeah. do it. You know, it's either you one. Could, a I, or B. I could see both scenarios of you dropping out and doing this or having like a 4.0. Yeah. Like honestly, I could. It wasn't. But if I'm gonna be at school and I'm gonna be middle of the road and shit like that, I'm not gonna deal with it. You know, mm-hmm. I couldn't. I wasn't doing the. It wasn't even that I wasn't doing it. It just wasn't for me. I wasn't at that point where I'm like, all right, fuck it, Magnum. Like we gotta put the pedal to the metal and like uh-huh. get down. Right. You know, we got to get down and dirty. I wasn't going to do that. So I'm like, fuck it. I might as well do something that I could do good. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, 
you, I, I love, well, I love listening to your podcast. You know, Thanks, I, to, I already told you, me and Ben and I uh, listened to it on our uh, your road trip on our road trip. So we we got we got some infinite. We actually tried to do a little podcast. Oh, no, we didn't try to do a podcast. We just like videoed ourselves just talking about some random shit. And just yeah. like watched it because we were so fucking bored. But we were like, it's good because you just you just because yeah. and it's not and it's not like you and I like we don't. We talked about some things we want to talk about, but it's not like we had like a set, but like we just, no, we just, just fucking talk. Bullshit. And here's the other thing that I was thinking about. I was thinking about yesterday, actually, because I was driving, whatever I was just thinking. And I'm like, all right, podcast works, podcast doesn't work. I don't fucking know. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's going to pop up. I don't know what the fuck's right. going to happen. I'm not expecting anything great. Mm-hmm. You know, uh-huh. I'm expecting exactly what I've been getting. Uh huh. Which is it? Which is which, well, no, is, which, is, which is good, good. Uh-huh. but it's nothing amazing. Uh-huh. You know, it's uh-huh. a, it's not rewarding me in any like monetary or like societal right, value. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it gives me a little bit of rewardingness. Uh huh. It's a little rewarding to me. No, but, I understand what you're you know saying. What I'm saying. Okay, but I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Right. Like if it doesn't do shit for the next 10, 20 years. It's going to be fucking cool to watch in 20 it's, years. And it's and not imagine, like you're investing like anything besides your like thoughts. And, well, like, there's some money okay, and whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you know it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a hobby. Uh-huh, you know, any uh-huh, hobby is no. going to cost right, you money in the 21st century. But here's the thing, like even like my crazy ass podcast, like if you guys want to go watch them, go check them out. There's a few of them about like how to deal with irritating people, all this shit. Uh, you know, I, you know, yeah. I love that one. And I'm in a wife beater and I'm bald as fuck and I'm just screaming. And I'm saying a bunch of shit and I'm just, you know, I sound like a fucking asshole, right? Maybe I still sound like an asshole, oh, but already I don't give a fuck, but already you can see how it's changed. Uh-huh. And guess what? In three more months, hopefully, I fucking hope there's some other change and another change. And you see, and even why I like putting like the subscribers, like, so we got 115 today. There's a video out there that I say I'm at 30 subscribers. Like that's kind of, to me, no, no, that that's kind of cool. I mean, I remember, you know? when, I remember when you started it, it was like, who's your first person that you had on? Nikola. Nikola. I because I remember seeing it and I and was like, I had Colton. I remember I, I I watched the Colton one. Yeah, and I remember I was like, you know, he's starting this, but like I know he'll like I I know he's not gonna give a fuck about how many people. Obviously, you want yeah. more people to watch it, but like he's not gonna give a fuck about how many people watch it, how many people subscribe. You know, yeah. he'll, he'll do it. Like he's got the fucking shirts, the the condoms. I got the time. It do, it doesn't matter to me, but that's what I'm saying is cool about it. And that's uh-huh. that brings value to me. Right. You know it. Realistically, what am I doing in my day to day that's creating value? I work at the bar, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But this is just a hobby where it's kind of like recording what I've done, uh-huh. recording my opinion, shit uh-huh. like that. Because I guarantee you something else, my ideas have changed from 16 to 17 to 18 to soon to be 19. You know, they've changed every fucking year. So it's cool to see that lineage. Imagine. I, I think the thing is, like, you can't do this wrong. No. Like, you're doing it, it's your, your way, your thing. And that's even why I talked about one of the perfection podcasts, which is one of those crazy ones. But I talk about it a lot with my father. It always comes up. It's like perfection, you know, in school, they always taught us hundreds perfect. You mm-hmm. want a hundred, you want a hundred. Well, fuck you. Like he can get a hundred way easier than I can get a hundred. So maybe my hundreds a 93. Maybe his hundreds, a hundred and like Colton, his hundreds, a hundred and five. If he got a hundred, he was pissed. I remember in math. If he got 100, he was upset because he didn't get the bonus points. Uh-huh. He got 105, he was at it, like content. For me in math, my 100 was a fucking 69, <laughs> you know? Yes. And it's just like that. So when people try to be perfect, or I think school is just disgusting when it comes to that. That's my like big problem with uh-huh. it because they want to make it, and society too, you need to have this, that, and the other to be happy, to be uh, ahead of the curve, to be doing the right thing. Fuck you, you know? I'm happy. I'm creating a podcast. You know, I think we have some good ass fucking convos on here. So what if you can shoot a hole in your my argument? I can shoot a fucking hole in your argument. So where does that leave us? Uh-huh. We're fucking equal. I yeah, uh, I think uh, I mean it's all always comes down to like the individual thing. Like even, you know, <sighs> some people say, you know, like we uh, I had my uh so I take a philosophy class, intro to philosophy, and they were talking about like how they did studies where it's like sixty thousand dollars a year, like makes you happy. Anything more than that's oh, yeah. just like whatever. Yeah. But it's like okay, yeah, like that'll make you happy. But like 
thirty thousand dollars can make you happy too. You got food, yeah. you got whatever. Maybe you need a million to make you happy. Yeah. Like it's it's what you do. And it's if you do you. and if you do like something like this where it's like what you want, like you're gonna be happy either way. And that's what and the, that amount of happiness is almost exponential increase, you know? Uh-huh. Or not even when I get ten viewers I'm not that happy. Like I'm a little pissed, but at least ten people, you know. But it's not zero. A hundred people yeah. watch it. I'm not fucking yeah. But I'm like, you know what? That that doesn't feel that bad. I get a few comments. I get a few likes. Well, shit. Like I don't give a, like the likes. It's just like, well, did this help you? You know, if uh-huh. people actually value it, that feels nice. You know, uh-huh. it feels good. It makes me happy. Yeah, and it's like it doesn't even have to be that monetary value. Like you, you get no monetary. I don't, I don't value get any from fucking yet, money from yes. this. It's a fucking yet. <laughs> We gotta start upping these subs, bro. Dude, you you could you could have gave me a monster get the get the ad out. Here. I thought you had the Starbucks. No, I, 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 no, I, I'm I'm happy with myself. Wait, get, get get Starbucks out here a little bit. Fuck Starbucks, bro. <laughs> I texted you. Dad texted Magnus this morning. I'm like, I'm going to Starbucks. You want anything? He's like, No, no, thanks though. Thanks. I was like, I I was like, There's no way he's gonna want anything, but I'm just gonna ask just in case. I have went to Starbucks like three or four times. You know, if I need a coffee or Dude, something. Dude, see, like, I don't drink coffee. I just go there, like, if I don't eat, but, like, especially now that I'm at college. So, like, all my classes are morning, and so I don't, I don't like, eat breakfast, breakfast. at home or make breakfast. Like, yeah. I'll go Chick-fil-A because it's just, like, dude, I'd, my food's so bad now. I did that summer. Well, I was there for a week, but me and Alan, my roommate, shout out to Alan. He's probably not watching a podcast. <laughs> Does he know about it? Oh, yeah. Bro, he was one of the people, he was the first, like, he was on the ground floor, man. Really? Yeah, because I started it up there. So oh, yeah, I was you talking did. to him, I'm like, and he's, you know, an asshole, kind of. He's like, Wait, fuck Alan it. Alan Clenor? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know he was your roommate. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Check boys, Yeah, man. obviously, yeah, dude. <laughs> so he's like, fuck it, bro, do this shit. If I wasn't that, uh, whatever, golfing, I'd yeah. be doing the same thing. I'm like, fuck it, man. Like, you know, so, um... Anyways, we ate Chick Fil A a fuck ton, and yeah. after that, I like can barely even eat it. No, like for me, I gained. So I mean, I, I'm like I'm a I'm a skinny guy, you could tell, but uh, so I came into college weighing like one like six like between one sixty one sixty five, you know, yeah. like it was skinny. I got there maybe like a month later, I was one seventy five, but I wasn't like fat. I was yeah. just I was just like you know getting into my body, and now I'm at like one seventy, but it's not like. I'm, I You're mean, also getting older though. I, I like, I eat so much for how like, yeah. I just got like crazy metabolism and it's just like those things. But your body, like even me, like when I don't work out, I feel like my muscles still like are getting bigger. More yeah, developed. no, like, it's you, like you're just weird. in that, like, you know? I'm, I'm like now I felt so different playing tennis for the first time in a while yeah. than like I did when I was like, cause you know, before high school. So it went, you know, I had soccer season from. November to February and then tennis right after. Yeah. But you know, during soccer season, we went gym two times a week, like, you know, like legs and stuff. And so I felt great going into tennis season. Like it took me a while uh-huh. to get like yeah. into it, but like movement wise, I felt great. And now like, you know, I was playing this kid at, at UCF and I was just like not getting the balls. I was just like, dude, like, yeah. And, and it doesn't feel any different, but just like when you don't get to balls that you usually get to, it's just like, fuck dude. Like you never realize like how good like yeah. that that was the best shape that's i'll probably where, like ever be in was like 16 okay okay you could but that's the thing like for me then like i was all right so i went to school i was 183 then i lost like 10 pounds okay because i was like keto and depressed and all that shit so none of that equals weight gain it's uh-huh. weight loss because i'm like fuck it why do i deserve to eat right then i started eating carbs again got back up to like mid 80s whatever okay. And now I've just been fucking cutting weight. I'm like one. I was 176 less yesterday when I weighed myself, oh, which wow. is a lot lighter than I've ever been. But I'm probably. I also hadn't eaten. I was shoveling rock all day, uh-huh. so I probably lost like three pounds. So I'm probably like 179 or something. Okay. But I just keep feeling better because I keep working out and I keep my diet just keeps getting well, better and better. And I was always like, you know, I'm never gonna have a six pack. Uh-huh. If I don't go for it now, like I don't have one yet, ladies. Okay. Or guys, you know, whatever. <laughs> when my only fans is up, I won't discriminate on who can buy it. All right. Okay. If you're a guy, you're allowed in. All right. If you just pay the extra fee. But anyways, but now I'm like, fuck it. Like you just got to get tighter and but, you got to get better. Cause it's not, ne- if I let up now, uh-huh. I'm never going to have but it. Even like looking at you, like you're not the type to like have that, like 
chiseled six, six pack. pack. No, no, you're like you're just like a big I guy. Know, like you I'm got that frame. I'm naturally built to just be fucking bigger. Uh-huh. That's like even like okay, obviously like I don't work out or like mm-hmm. yeah. often or anything, but like I've got like the wide troll, like I'm tall, like but my you're dad. So, you're naturally more of a skinny guy. Uh-huh. You know, so if you want abs, it's uh-huh. not, you know, you right. can just but kinda you, you, you've seen my dad before, right? Like you're like yeah, lately. Like he's he's like he's got the you know, like the big yeah. chat. Like he and he's not fat, but and he doesn't work out, but he's like he's got it's like your, your body type kinda like that. And even with like my diet, like my diet's gotten so much worse. Like I try to cook for myself, like I'll make an I cook like I'll buy I'll buy like the, uh, not like a pre-made salad, but like the, in the bag where it's like lettuce, yeah, tomatoes, I whatever. I and I'll buy like the olive garden dressing. I'll put it on it. And then I like cook myself a chicken breast, right? A nice little salad with chicken breast. But like, dude, I can't cook for shit. Do you have a pan? I do have, I have do a pan. Have a I, have every, I have everything. I, I can tell you, this is what I ate this for one month when I was in college straight. Dude, I'd eat the same breakfast and the same, well, it'd be like, I'd make like two or three meals of it. Uh huh. So you get ground beef. Okay. okay, ground beef is the most anabolic thing. I only eat red meat. I don't eat chicken. I don't eat any really? that shit anymore. Yeah, because okay. fuck it. Why not die early? No, but they say this hatchet, like all that shit, it's not really bad for you. Your body's going to process it out. You know, you're young. It's healthy. Okay, just fuck what you've heard about red meat. It's actually not a carcinogen. It's not okay. going to kill you. Oh, I eat red meat all the time. Okay, so I do like two pounds of ground red meat. Okay. Put it in a pan. And then you get a fucking pot and you put in like good amount of spinach, like handful or two. Which will reduce down carrots, celery. Okay, like two or three. Um, then what do you put in? Then you put in tomatoes, like three tomatoes, half an onion. Okay, what else is there? I'd put in a little bit of garlic paste. Then I'd put in pepper, um, oregano. How, how, how big is this pot? It's like you know this, but all the vegetables reduce yeah, they, down. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, then if you want to get really snazzy, you put in some bone broth. Oh boy! And then you take the meat, you cook it as good as you can, like uh-huh. really good. Dump it all in there. All right, not too much fat you want in there, but you want a little bit of like the liquid fat to right, go in. Right. Makes a delicious like broth. <sighs> the meat, and it's I call it anabolic because you just can feel like there's nothing that would give you any fat. Like there's no fat that'll uh-huh. go on you from this. It's just all fucking muscle growth, bro. And then if you want to need carbs, you put in some rice, uh-huh. bro. It's good as fuck. Well, see, so for me, like I, oh, you and know, bell I obviously, pepper, bell peppers essential. Okay. Can't forget the bell peppers. Like I try to go. And like, the thing is, I don't spend money. Like, I don't buy clothes stuff. The only thing I spend money on is food. Yeah. Really, the only thing. <laughs> I would spend the fuck ton at Publix. Dude, oh my! Like, I go to Publix, and like, you know, dude, I, you know, I seize those opportunities when it's like uh, buy one, full one chicken one. tender <laughs> sub for like half price or whatever. I'll, I'll get it. And but like, just in general, like, I can tell I eat a lot shittier food. But like, it's the weirdest thing because like, I'm not getting fat, and my like my skin. Has I like, gotten so much better? Filling out, bro. You're getting older, dude. Like it's it's weird because I, you know, high yeah. school I had pretty bad, like not pretty bad acne, but like I had acne. And now it's like gotten so much better. Yeah. So like, I don't know. It's weird. I feel like it should be the opposite. Like I expected to come back like this, like fat, like little gross, gross kid. But I mean, I'm not saying I'm like cute or anything. <laughs> but you know yeah. what I mean, dude. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I don't know. It's 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 tough adjusting to just That's life the like thing. that. It, like, but it's like it's the same as understanding these quotes. It's all that. The older you get, it just gets better. Uh-huh. You know, you get better with age. Like, unless you are built on faulty, you know, unless you have bad genes, uh-huh. you know, unless you're built on falsy premises, you're going to keep getting better. You're going to keep developing. You're going to keep growing. You're going to get smarter. You're going to get stronger. You're going to get bigger naturally, you know, to a point. Uh-huh. Once uh-huh. you get probably about 30 as a guy, you're going to start going down a little bit. But until then, you know. Because I feel like it's all like the same challenges, you know, like right now or last year two last two years was school is a challenge mm-hmm. you you kind of get it now call college is a challenge you get you kind of like get it there's another challenge but you're gonna but but the it. older you get like it's just a different form yeah. of challenge and i think the maturity of it is realizing that it's the same yeah. challenge but just in a different form and doing better on it so yeah like, yeah. yeah i mean that's how it goes it's tough it's fucking <laughs> tough um you want to talk about Trump a little bit? About Trump? I mean, I'm not, I'm not like super politically versed. I'd say politically like informed. Like I kind of just like really don't give a shit. Yeah. Cause like, cause my parents obviously. So are you an American? You're American. I am an American. So I was born so are Manatee you gonna, Memorial. Are you gonna vote? I, I am going to vote. Uh, well, I, I, okay. I haven't really, I'm probably going to vote Trump. Like, really? I, 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 so, okay. So my thing is like, I'm very. <sighs> 
I'd say I'm obviously more like Republican, but okay. I like why is that? Um, because I agree with like a lot of the things. Do but, you think that? But there's but there's like some like okay so like climate change, like I don't agree that it's like crazy like as crazy as like all this stuff like by 2030 we're gonna like run out of fucking trees or some shit but i, agree. I don't think anyone says that no though, but like you, you know, know you know they the, you know like there's a lot of like well, exaggeration th- here's of what it. i okay. think i think that people are like yo motherfucker like we need to get on this shit uh-huh. and everyone's Which like I, I agree with but ever everyone's like all right we need to be on it by 2020 but we don't get on it. And we're like, look, the world's still here. And people don't understand. It's like, no, we were getting on it by 2020 so we could survive like, to 2100. 20, yeah, uh-huh. No, and you I know, agree that's that. what we're looking that, for. That's so. one thing. Cause I feel like, like a lot of like Republican kind of di- like, they're just like, okay, climate change isn't real, but or I, it's that, not important, not important. But I think that it is Me too. not, not, I'm like in the, I'm like a little bit more towards like the lefty, like, like I, I think it's, you're saying. I think it's a, a pretty big problem. And then like, but then there's like other things like, like the, I don't know, like what? Okay, like gun control, like uh, you, okay, it's like you can't really. Okay, everybody should be allowed to have a gun. Like that's a basic, like it's an amendment. It's a, yeah. it's a fucking amendment. Uh, so like I don't really know what you can do to like prevent all these school shoot. Like yeah. I don't think I don't think guns are the problem. That's it's the people. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And then uh, like uh, like abortions. I think abortion should be legal. I agree. Um. I don't know what else is there. Like not a whole lot, but like a few of the things, like abortion and shit. The Republicans are not like, come on, it's yeah. twenty twenty. If abortions are fucking outlawed, like that's crazy. That's like insane. I, I, like my it's not thought gonna behind, happen on like on a national level. No, my thought behind that is like, okay, so imagine you're like a eighteen year old or nineteen year old, just like you know, living with your nineteen year old girl living with some like dude who just like traps and stuff and like whatever. <laughs> And there's absolutely like no future for you, let alone a child. child. Yeah. Like, and you have an ax, like you're pregnant and it's like, dude, okay. Well, like the quality of life is going to be so poor for the child. And it's just going to cause more problems in terms of like child support, yeah. like food stamps, like all that. It's just better to not have the baby. You're going to raise a fucking yeah. shit. Okay. Obviously kid. don't have a, don't have a freaking, uh, don't have a fucking, uh, abortion at like seven months pregnant yeah but like it should be legal yeah. to, i don't know okay obviously there's i agree that there's some limit where after like i don't know after five yeah. months or whatever I they guess. shouldn't be but like they should definitely be allowed like and it is so it's not a problem yeah, though, but like you know? but like alabama or whatever remember what was that where they like aren't abortions like illegal in there's alabama? a certain like cat dish you know there's certain uh-huh. things that kind of manipulate it uh-huh. you know but i don't Realistically, if you're an American and you want to get an abortion, you can get one somewhere. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. if you're in Alabama and you can't get an abortion, guess what? You're driving in Tennessee or you're right. driving in Florida. Right. You know? So I think I think that's and, and like even now you see like I mean it doesn't happen often, but like sometimes you see like uh like sixteen year old arrested for like having a baby in secret and like bearing in the backyard. Like yeah, you that's know, fucked up. And like she could easily. But that's be, just more like the, they don't want. Yeah, to have the parents. parents yeah, shit that's like true. That, so, so they'd rather like kill a child. Yeah. But uh, do you think maybe like the more because uh, what you said was a kind of a decent amount of Democrat like the abortion shit. And yeah, no, like it is. But like, is it more because of maybe your parents coming from Czech? And I mean, that uh, was fucking communist. Right? No, yeah, but they uh, they didn't leave because of that. Because they were after that, like uh, they were there after that. Yeah, they were after. Because like, but my did da- they hate it? Did they like it? Like Czech? Like they 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 didn't mind. Like they, they, as communists, was, they didn't really give a fuck. Well, Czech wasn't communist. Well, it was like when the Russians invaded. Yeah. But by the time my parents were like born or okay. were growing up, growing up, like it was it was gone. There was already like totally. a revolution. But like, wh- all right. So they so were like, still under the yeah. No, they they the were, but like curtain, right? But it wasn't. It wasn't like it wasn't as extreme. Extreme but it was still as communist. It was. it was, but like, uh. So I don't know if you know the Czech president. Uh, his name was Václav Havel. Like he was like, all right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was like probably the most like. Yeah. Uh, I'd say he was like the Abraham Lincoln of Czech. Like okay. Czech obviously hasn't has hasn't had right. forty five, but they've had like six. But so he was the president. And he was like influential like they named the airport after him like i don't right. he was like president and he was like really big into like the revolution stuff so once my parents were like growing up it was just like it was like a, a democracy like 
or like or like a republic. That's why it's like Czech Republic. And okay. it was well, it was Czechoslovakia. Sorry. So when the it went from Czechoslovakia when? Uh. That had to early nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Like after the yeah, USSR yeah. fell apart. Yeah. But Czechoslovakia wasn't communist after the, after like, after the revolution. So the, the, uh, the Russians invaded like sixties, I think I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too okay. informed, but right. like, I know, I know like my grandma tells me about it. All Cause the I know stuff. like Alesha, you know, Alesh, like Toby's father uh-huh. and stuff was talking about like having to go to the army and uh-huh. shit like that. Th- like that. Okay. Yeah, that was, but it wasn't like. It wasn't an extreme. Communism, it wasn't. It wasn't. But like, it was still communist. It was. It was. But uh, Alex is also like a little bit older little than bit my older. parents. I think he's like probably going to be like closer to like sixty soon. No. You know, like fifty five or something. Maybe like I think he's like Jay. I, I don't think because my my dad's forty eight. Oh, okay. So but still, so it's that's like only seven a seven year, year difference. Yeah, yeah. But like, but yeah. But I don't think he had to go. Like, okay. Army, but okay. So like, I know my dad told me the story that but was my, he also a pro tennis player. Like, how old was he? Pro yeah, that's. Th- I think that's another yeah. thing. Was like, well, for my mom, it was fine. But my mom's also even younger than my dad, so it's just kind of. Mm-hmm. I think by the time my mom was like growing up, it was n- n- none okay. of that. It was completely like democracy. But uh, I know my dad told me like how he had like. Our grandpa owned like a, or wait, maybe that was, maybe his grandpa owned like a, well, it was, he was either the Soviets or it was World War II when he had like, they took away like his, like he had like a windmill or like a, like a slaughterhouse or something like that. And they they just like took took it away. And like, I know my, 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 uh, my great grandpa, like my grandma's dad was in like the second world war and stuff. And so, but like, I don't think that's, I don't think that really plays that much of a part. And like, they like, I don't like, like, so like socialists or so, communists, so, obviously at all. And so like, that's why you like, what about Bernie? Like, why don't you fuck with Bernie? Like, or I feel like, like it, I feel like it, his is like too, like the, like just a socialist, like, like you, ideology. Like, it's just, I don't like, and like illegal immigrants, like totally like should be like not allowed, in. not allowed in. And like, yeah, obviously yeah. if you're legal, like my parents were illegal yeah. or whatever. And like. I know, I know some people who are not legal immigrants, yeah. but like, it's just, I don't know. Like, I feel like the Democrats too much, like are like, okay with like illegal immigration, like give them a, but like, I don't agree with, like, I'm, I, I, th- I honestly think I'm like really in between, like yeah. a little bit more on like the right side, but like, mm-hmm. that's why I probably vote for I think, okay. So like I had this conversation, I don't know who it was with, like Trump is a good president. He's just a complete dick. I think he's a good president, though. I th- in in a non emotional, like simply like statistical. I think. Like, okay, not it, but I think it's. I think. Let me put it this way. I think he was given a shot. Like after Obama was in office, the country was very stable. Mm-hmm. Very stable. It's on proper footing. You know, it wasn't make. It wasn't uh-huh. ringing in the dollars. But it, it also wasn't, bad. Uh-huh. wasn't doing. But we weren't. We, it was, it was we were going solid, up. It was a solid. It was a okay. Solid and then what Trump did was blew it up. He's like, because you can do it. Like you can put gas on the country, uh-huh. you know, and light it on fire. Like we did with, you know, keeping interest rates really low and just pumping up the stock market to fucking peak to twenty nine thousand. You know. But then you see when coronavirus, everyone gets scared. It's dropped three thousand points. You know, it's the worst drop since like the recession, uh-huh. like shit like that's going on, which is that stable? You know, you lose, don't do math, whatever. You lose a ninth of the right. value of a fucking, um, of the entire stock market in a week. Right. Is, is that like normal? I mean, you know? I mean, that's why like I, like, I, feel, I feel like I'm not. Like, to be completely honest, like educated enough into that. Like, yeah. I don't pay much attention. I probably should. Yeah. But like, I, like so. Okay, so like, who are you voting for? I don't know if I'm gonna vote. That's a TV. really that. That's another thing that I was like, thinking about. I, I think about. that's kind of whack. But I feel like, like honestly, I feel like you've kind of got to because I feel cause exactly. You, you don't I feel reserve like in order to co- talk about it. You, you re- should yeah, vote. You vote. Like once but, you vote, you reserve the right to either criticize or praise yeah, somebody. You but, can't do that if you don't vote. If I do vote, then what? I might vote for a fucking independent or something. Right, yeah. Because Trump, I almost, like, I, I can't, like, not, not morally, more just the environment. Uh-huh. Like, I can't willingly vote against someone and the country. I think he's going to probably blow up the fucking country if he wins, mm-hmm. you know, because he's going to just keep 
Wait, so so when do they... Uh, but then if Bernie does it, I'm not going to vote for fucking Bernie either. When do they uh, determine or, like, one of the results of the, like, Democratic... I don't know election. exactly. It's got to be before, up. like, it's yeah. got to be before, like, whenever, November, right? November's yeah, when we November vote? November 20th, I think. But, or so, whatever, November something. So... It's going to come in eventually. Right now, it's looking like Bernie's Bernie's doing fucking amazing. Uh-huh. Bloomberg's spending like a motherfucker to try to I buy mean, he's it. he's also, like, net worth is, like, fucking, like, $20 billion, so... Like, 60, 70. Dude, that's crazy. The guy's he's he's got to be, like top, like, top 50 richest people now. Oh, yeah, like, higher. Like, he's fucking rich as that's fuck, crazy. bro. Yeah. And then, so Trump's going to be the Republican nominee, yeah, right? Yeah, obviously. See, like, I didn't agree with, like, that. Well, I mean, I didn't really, like, know much about it, but, like, the impeachment was yeah. just, I thought that was kind of bullshit. Like, it is what it is, you know? They're playing these fucking games. Like, to be honest, know? I have no idea how he got elected. Like, Trump, like, I thought I thought it was like. Well, what happened is he lost the popular vote. Uh huh. Okay. But, and I agree, like, a lot of people hate the Electoral College, and I thought it was stupid when I was, like, 12. Uh huh. I thought, like, oh, yeah, it's dumb. Like, ugh. You know? Uh huh. But realistically, it makes a lot of fucking sense. No, it does. Because, you know, what just because New York, California, Miami, they're, or say, yeah, New York, LA, and Miami are the three, say, most populated, more populated right, cities, right? right. They're going to be liberal leaning. All more populated cities are going to be liberal leaning. But just because there's more liberal leaning people doesn't mean they should affect the people in fucking Nebraska. Uh-huh. You know, I don't think that's right. So he ended up winning the Electoral College but losing the uh, popular vote. Uh-huh. That's just because he knew how to play the game. That's what happened in uh, – so in Czech, the, I, I don't – they don't have an – well, because it's – Electoral College. Electoral College. Because uh, it's, it's not really like – like the U.S. where it's states and yeah. stuff, and so this guy, his name's Zeman, he, like, he's k- kind of like Trump. Like everybody fucking hates him. Okay. And he got reelected. Like he was a, not a good pre- because like all these small counties. Yeah, voted for him. Voted for him. Like like, which equaled up to like. Yeah. Like two, okay, so Czech has I think like eleven million people. So all these small counties add up to like three million people. And then, you know, say half of Prague votes for him. That's another million people. Like, it's just like, and so he, he won it. And like, people are like, I was there over the summer. They weren't protesting him. They were protesting like the, uh, the prime minister or something like some high up that he appointed. Like it was crazy. So it was, I remember who sent me, somebody sent me a picture of that. I thought maybe it was Alan or something. So we went there and it's right next to where I live Mm -hmm. or used to live. In in Prague, Prague. Uh, there's a soccer stadium and then there's like a a park Mm -hmm. and there's a huge open plain and that's where there was like a lot of the revolutions like like during uh, back in the day back in like the seventies and stuff and there was three hundred thousand people there wow and it was like like two square miles three hundred thousand people which is like a thirtieth. Of the Czech Republic. Yeah. So, like, imagine, so imagine, that's, like, the equivalent if, like, 10 million people went yeah. to a protest here. Yeah, that'd be insane. And so, like, I mean, you're going to find, like, shit like that everywhere, like, every country, like, where it's just, like, obviously, yeah. except for, you know, like, North Korea. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you have you no, don't get no fucking choice. Fuck but uh, I don't really know. Like, I'm not really into, like, it depends. Like, I'll probably pay more attention to it the sooner it gets. Yeah. Closer. The closer it gets. But also like that's the same thing with like my parents not being Yeah. They American. they well they, they got their citizenship now. They had green yeah. cards and they got their citizenship like two years but ago. But not being like natural born. Right, but they won't vote. Like they don't yeah. vote. They don't bother. And All right. so I feel like a lot of it you get from like your parents too yeah. is like the political views and I have no Yeah. No political All view. Right. Like so last question. What do you okay. think about coronavirus? Um I I think that people are overreacting a little bit, like especially here. Like obviously it's a huge problem, huge problem. I was at the bank the other day. This is funny. And uh, not to. No, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, I'm at the bank and this lady's like, I don't want to touch nothing with this coronavirus going around. I'm like, bitch, if the coronavirus was going around and you were going to get it from touching it, everybody, everybody you would, would know it. somebody that has I, it. I actually have gotten like, like, cause you know, before I, I drove back from FGC like Friday after my yeah. classes and I went to the bathroom at like gas station, they stopped to get mm-hmm. gas. And I like, I had like a jacket on, I like kind of just like 
put, put, you know, put, put it over my hand and open it. Like, it's just like small thing, but obviously I know like chances of me get, I don't know if there's, have there been any like cases here in America? Yeah. And I think it's inevitable. I'm ready to get it. Oh, I'm well, ready. I think, Cause it's I not going to kill me. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it I'm kills, saying. Like if you're, if you're a healthy young individual with, you a, are, with access to medical care, obviously you know, like, it's like the flu, bro. Yeah. Like I, I might not even go to the fucking doctor. Like, right. It's that's not gonna be what kills me. Uh-huh. You know, if you're 80 and you catch it, right. it'll give you fucking pneumonia and you'll die. Uh-huh. But me, what the fuck's it? You know. So I think. Well, I read somewhere. Obviously, I I don't know what to believe that it was like created by the Chinese government or something. They have like a patent yeah. on it, like something with like Bill Gates too, with like population control or some shit. I haven't heard anything about the population control, but there is a decent amount of people that I know that think that the Chinese released. It on so purpose. I. Honestly, I'd believe that, but I have no idea, and I really, like, don't care that much. But, like, I also saw that – well, so did you see how they built the hospital in China uh, maybe, like, a couple weeks ago? Like, when it first was, like, really yeah. big? They built a hospital in nine days in Wuhan, which is, like, ground yeah. zero. And they said – I don't know, like, what the death toll is now. They say it's, like, a couple thousand, but, like, they say the real one is, like, 35,000. And so I don't really know, like, with China, but you never fucking well, know. Well, here's like, the thing. Like, at first, I was, th- I was telling my father, I'm like, bro, imagine if it's fucking, like, millions of people are dead in China. Like, 56 million people are down on lockdown. And, you know, it's fucking with our economy. That's uh-huh, why, uh-huh, the, uh-huh. you know, stock markets drop so low. And he he was saying how, you know, they could done it to fuck with. I'm like, imagine that. They, they, um, they really could. Yeah. But and here's, here's China, the thing. Uh, but imagine if they've inflated the numbers. Imagine if coronavirus really hasn't killed anyone. Imagine if it's just some... Well, I feel like the numbers are too small to be like... To even like be... You know what I mean? Like if they said it killed like a million people, but when it really killed like a thousand, like... Yeah, but but still everyone's... Because listen, we live in a gambling society. uh The stock market is all gambling. You know, uh, there's no... You don't own... Amazon store. You can't go into Amazon and say, Hey, I own a 46, uh, you know, uh-huh. a part of this store. Give me some. No, it doesn't work like that. It's nowadays we're all just betting on whether it'll go up or whether it'll go down. So if they're saying, Hey, there's this disease that's spreading like fucking wildfire and everyone knows it's not going to be containable. Uh-huh. It's inevitable that it spreads to fucking everywhere. I think most people think that, you know? So if it's like that, then they're like, well, shit, I'm going to I'm gonna change my betting strategy. Uh-huh. I'm not going to keep betting because it could pop off. It could get everyone sick, you know? I saw uh, something like this is actual like article. I don't know. It was posted by somebody like some like pretty, pretty big like news or mm-hmm. uh, magazine thing. And it was like how Americans are yeah. actually like afraid to drink Coronas because of it. Yeah. And I'm like, you've got to be fucking insane to think that has anything to do with it yeah like how dumb do you have to be to think like that the fucking coronavirus which comes from china yeah if it came from mexico where corona i'd i'd get a See, little but bit then they wouldn't know <laughs> then they wouldn't give a fuck then they'd be they don't even understand the corona is probably from mexico man yeah that's true you know at that point they aren't afraid of that Dude, I, I just don't know with like the Corona. Like, they would I don't, quit eating Mexican food. That's what they they'd quit going to fucking Taco Bell probably. And uh, <laughs> so uh, I I flew like the the first week that it was really like popular. I flew to Dallas, uh-huh. you know? and most people at the airport had like the uh, yes. the surgical, but they don't do anything. They don't. The air still gets through like sides yeah. and through it. You need like a Full fucking like high grade like. And so I'm like, dude, these people are just like so. I understand like the precautionary, but like you get it. Like, okay, you're gonna feel it's the fuck, it's the flu. You'll be fucked for like a week and then, you know, you'll Might probably be, you. probably Might. be fine. Yeah. I mean, I doubt that. It's like six times I as doubt deadly that, as the regular flu. That's I, why I read the. I doubt doctor. that it'll kill anybody. Has anybody died from it here? I don't know. I don't think so. I well, doubt that. Because there's like 12 people that have gotten If you're it. a fully healthy or person, or yeah, like. Even like my dad, who's like forty five, health or forty eight, whatever, healthy. Yeah, I don't think he had that much. Okay, if you're like eighty, you're like yeah, if you're an old person, or if you have like AIDS or something that like weakens your immune system, yeah, you'll probably die from. But you also die from like the common cold. Exactly. So, So, I don't, I don't think it's as big of a problem until there's like thousands of cases. Yeah. I think it's fine. All right. Well, we've done about an hour and a half. Oh, okay. Wow, that went by pretty fast. Yeah. 
Uh, everyone fucking says that. Yeah. Because we're just talking. Just yeah, talking. just casual. All right. All right, any final remarks? Uh, I mean, obviously, like and subscribe. Like, subscribe. Drop some comments. Check you know? out the Instagrams, plural. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll put that in. And yeah. uh, I'll, I'll definitely be... Uh, Repping the uh, repping the brand. Fire. I'll, I'll put I'll put some I'll put it on my story. Get get some subscribers here, and we'll we'll try to get. Where are we at? at oh, what are you at? We're at one fifteen. I mean, I think I think one like one thirty one fifty is like a reach. One thirty is the goal what? for Fuck. for for after this video. If we can hit one thirty after this video, that'd be crazy. I think we're going to. All right, thank you, bastards.